Hey everyone! I feel like I'm getting lazier and lazier and like more and more of my videos are happening on the casual couch mostly because I don't want to put on makeup. That's like 100% why we often end up on the casual couch. It's because I don't feel like putting on makeup. And so the casual couch is a great excuse to be like, oh, we're just being casual today. Whatever. I like the way I look with makeup on. I just hate putting makeup on. Like, so much. Like, I need a makeup artist to come to my house and put it on for me every time if I, you know, didn't hate other people touching me. Anyway, that this is neither here nor there nor anywhere. We are back at the casual couch for my wrap up for June. June is already almost gone. It has been a super busy month for me at my job, so. I have been just kind of reading whatever, again, what else is new, and I had some DNFs that I didn't even, like, count into this list because I DNF them so fast, I was just, like, I just started listening and I was like, nope, don't want that. So, my list actually, I think, feels a little bit smaller, and I don't know if that is because Goodreads, like, isn't showing all of the books I read again, which has happened before, or if uh, I just had so many DNFs that... It feels like there should be more. Because it does, it feels like there should be more, but I, I don't remember. I count on Goodreads to remember what I read for me, and sometimes that works. The stuff that I did read, the stuff that I didn't like immediately DNF, I did enjoy, so that's a good thing. Hey guys, this is the world's fastest reminder that you can support me on Patreon and see all kinds of exclusive videos like these ones. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. Let's just get right into it with the beginning of June, June 3rd, with Nine Perfect Strangers by Lane Moriarty, which I assume is a pen name because that is like the best name for an author ever. Damn. I don't actually know if that's a pen name. This is my first of her books. I've heard of her books before, but I, again, Overdrive app, it was available now. And I was really pleasantly surprised. It's the story of nine people who go to a, like, wellness, like, health resort spa getaway thing. And it's a really unusual one, and that's kind of why they're drawn there. And they're all just sort of regular people who are all just coming from various hardships in their lives. Some of them have lost family members, some of them are like recently divorced. And they're coming to this spa where they end up uh, finding that it's not quite what they had expected, and maybe they don't want to be there anymore, but now they can't leave. I was expecting from the premise that it was going to be a lot more tense and scary than it was, but it really wasn't. This book is such a slow burn. Like, it's all about the characters, and like, the plot occasionally, like, will pop up and be like, Hi, I'm the plot! And the characters will be like, Go away the plot, we're having character moments. Oh, okay, I'll see you later then, I guess. And that's... That's how this book goes. And you know what? Like, I usually don't like that. But I actually liked that. I gave this one four stars. I can't remember if I plan a, a full review or not, but I think I do. So look out for that. It was so character heavy. And you know me in characters, and I thought they were all really interesting. So that's why it managed to get four stars from me, even though it's basically the plot is like such an afterthought. Then I watched that uh, a Ted Bundy movie on Netflix. What is it? Like, extraordinarily something in vile? I don't know. It's a bunch of adjectives. Um, and I was like, okay, well, it's based on like these two books. One of them being The Stranger Beside Me by Anne Rule. When I watch a movie that's like a biopic or a a dramatization of like a famous trial or something like that, it makes me interested to know what the real thing was that happened. So I, of course, was like, okay, well, I want at least one of these books. And I went and read The Stranger Beside Me, obviously. And I gave it three stars. It was interesting. I really liked Anne Rule's style and how she wrote it because it wasn't really super overwrought. It wasn't really super emotional, but at the same time, it wasn't completely dry and clinical either. And so I liked that, and I, I think I want to read more because I think she, all, she has a few other, like, crime books, and I want to read more of those. I didn't love it, obviously, with only three stars. I'm not super into serial killers. It's just that, like, when I watch something that's, like, based on true events, it makes me want to find out what's true, what's not, what really happened. 
Then I DNF'd. Uh, this one I did leave in as a DNF because I got a bit further than my other DNFs where I got like one or two chapters in the other ones and I was like, no, this is not for me. But this one I got like at least a third of the way in and possibly more. It's called Gunslinger Girl by Lindsay Ellie, I think is how you pronounce her name. And anyway, no, no, like it looked like it might be fun. I was like, okay, like modern western steampunk shenanigans with this girl, this sort of Annie Oakley-esque girl who's a really good shot, and like what sort of shenanigans is she gonna get up to? Because her dad like tries to sell her basically to a marriage and she runs away, and it's always a great start to any story. But the way, the direction that it went was not at all what I was hoping for, nor what the book really leads you to think you're gonna get. Instead of like becoming an outlaw or something fun like that, she joins a circus, and that could also be fun, except for it's not. Like, I was decently far into the story, and I still had no idea, like, what really the overarching plot was, and she still hadn't really performed yet, it was all just very, very slowly getting to know everyone in the circus, getting to know the town, getting to know the cute boys, and, like, watching the other acts, watching them practice, and I was so bored. So, a steampunk western called Gunslinger Girl shouldn't be boring. Wow, yeah, so I was like, no, I'm stopping this. Like, the writing is already pretty poor, and then it was just boring me out of my mind, so gave up on that one. Next we had Identical by Ellen Hopkins, which I think was a reread. Like, I think I read this one a long time ago. It's just, it's one of those, like, really intense, dramatic trauma stories that I think Ellen Hopkins writes a lot of, if I remember correctly. It's about these twin girls who are children of a woman who's a politician, and I think their dad is like a lawyer or something, I can't remember. And so two high-powered adults, and the dad molests one of them, and they have eating disorders, and they drink, and all of this, and do drugs, and like just so many things. And I think I remembered reading it when I was younger, and I think I remembered liking it when I was younger. But like now, as an adult, it just seems a little bit too overwrought for me, over the top. Like, these girls have every single traumatic problem that a upper-class white teenager can have in America, basically. And there's just so much, and it's so emotional. And when you're a teenager, everything is that overwrought and emotional, and it's great to read about people who are just suffering. You know when you're a teenager and you just really want to read about suffering? But now as an adult in my 30s, I'm like, this is a bit much for me. I know there are certainly people going through these things, but like the way that the book did it and the fact that these characters are really going through every possible thing just wasn't for me anymore. I gave it three stars because I still thought it was well written, the twist at the end was, was engaging, because I had forgotten what it was, and it was alright. It was, it was alright. Next, I read Internment by Samira Ahmed. This book has been stalking me for a little while, and I finally just like gave in and read it, or listened to it. I keep seeing it, not even just on Overdrive, but I just keep seeing it around. Like, I think somebody else on my Goodreads had read it recently, or, or marked it as to read recently, and I was like, all right, book, fine. I was really concerned about reading you, that you were gonna be terrible and melodramatic and all this stuff, and, but, I'll give you a chance. And it's alright. I gave it three stars. It's about a girl who is Muslim and she uh, lives in sort of an alternate... It's not even alternate history because it's kind of ha taking place at the same time as we are. Kind of closer, I think, to the election. The previous election. But it's an alternate world where Muslims were put into internment camps and her going into being placed into an internment camp and her and her rebelling and finding a way to stand up and have a voice and Nigel is watching something and I hope it's a fly and not a ghost because otherwise I'm, I'm in trouble. Anyway, and her just rebellion, standing up, fighting back, trying to get out of this internment camp and it was interesting because, like, it wasn't, as, it wasn't as insane as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be so political and so just, like, 
over dramatic and everything, but it really wasn't to me, at least. Like, they don't even mention the president by name, even though it's obvious who this president is supposed to be. I usually don't like to read political stuff like this too much because I use reading to escape from how fucked up America is right now, not to think about it. But it, it was really interesting to think about that, like, this author wasn't too far off because. Muslims aren't in internment right now, but other people are interred in the United States, and the people who are right now have it worse than the characters in this book had it. Um, if you take away, in this book, if you take away the, like, American setting, this could just be a regular dystopian. Like, it felt very much like one of those where a girl of some class or society gets imprisoned and has to break free, has to find herself and break free. This really wanted, I think, to be something like The Hate You Give, where it's a powerful story of a minority learning to stand up for themselves, learning to have a voice, learning to not fall into stereotypes. But it wasn't because it was not nearly as skillfully written as The Hate You Give, and everything came really easily for the main character. like. Certainly th bad things happened to her, but like whenever she wanted to fight back, it was easy. And this character was like, oh, I was really, really afraid, but I did the cool thing anyway. So I didn't love that, and also like a guard helps her because he's also in love with her, and I didn't like that because like he's not helping her because she thinks she deserves to be treated like a human being. He's helping her because he's hot for her. Not great. Then I read Dark of Night, Flesh and Fire by Jonathan Maber Mabry? Mabry? I don't know. It'll be on the screen. Um, which I believe my library had classified as, as a part of the Rot and Ruin series. And I gave it three stars. It's a zombie novella which takes place within like the Rot and Ruin universe. None of which I have read, but I had no trouble understanding this one outside of that. I'm um, not going to give you too many details because I am going to do a review, I've already filmed it, it'll be up eventually. But it was bonkers in the best possible way. Like, this book was a wild ride of nonsense that was so fun. This was an official so bad it's good for me, like, it was so fun. It follows three different people who are caught in the zombie apocalypse. Kind of for, there's another one who gets a point of view a little bit, but she's not important. Grizzled army veteran and his dog, a police woman, and a LARPer in the zombie apocalypse. And just, it is bonkers, and I loved it. And finally, I read The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. Weir? Ware? I don't know. And I, I actually haven't rated it yet as of filming this, but I think I'm going to give it three stars. Maybe leaning towards four, like 3.75. It was another really slow, character-driven story that the blurb made you think it was going to be a lot more intense than it was. But I still ended up listening and not minding that it wasn't as intense as the blurb made it sound because I was interested in the mystery and the characters. It's a family drama mystery story. I thought maybe it was going to be a lot more intense and murdery and like that sort of thing. But it's, it's really not. Like, there's some murder, but it's really played not played up. It's very low key. And it's about a girl who finds out that she has inherited something from a woman who claims to be her grandmother, even though the main character, I say girl, she's an adult, she's a grown-ass woman, she's in her 20s, and she's like, she's living that poor life, like, she's struggling, she can't pay her rent, she had to take out a loan with some loan sharks, and now they're after her trying to break her thumbs, and she's like, okay, well, she works on the pier as a tarot card reader, and she's really good at lying to people, basically. Like, reading people and lying to them. And so she goes, she's like, I really need this money because I would like to eat and not be threatened with finger breaking. So I'm gonna go and like, I'm probably just gonna inherit a little bit of money and, and I'm gonna, then I'm just gonna leave. I'm gonna pretend to be this granddaughter. And when she goes there, it everything gets way more complicated. Now, normally I don't really like deception storylines, but I was intrigued by this one because it didn't feel quite like a normal deception storyline. I do wish that the main character was a little bit more nervy, like, she 
is lying, of course, and she knows she's lying, and she has to occasionally think about, like, maybe I should stop lying. This is getting out of hand. But I wish that she was a little bit more, like, nah, fuck it, I'm gonna lie my way through this, because it's working. And, you know, you don't want a character who's too dislikable, and you'd be like, oh, she's lying, it's working, but it's wrong. But I would be on board for the it's wrong. Like, maybe it, that's my chaotic neutral side showing through, but, like, Get get the get you some money, girl. Like these people are kind of terrible. Except Mitzi. Mitzi is the best human being on the planet. Fight me. I know her name is Mitzi, and that's how they get you. You think she's gonna be terrible, and then Mitzi is my precious, precious child, and I love her so much. I might do a review for this one. I haven't written down any notes, so I don't know, so I can't decide how much I want to tell you. But if you're looking for a family drama mystery that is very slow moving, if you don't care, again, that the plot just occasionally rears its head and it's mostly about the family stuff, and there is this mystery that does weave through the whole thing, but we're not in a we're not rushing towards the end to solve it. We're just sort of we're meandering towards the end, but there's still this feeling of tension, this feeling of what's going on. I did guess the twist pretty early, but that didn't really bother me too much because I wasn't sure. So if Goodreads is correct, those were the books that I read in June. I hope that you guys had a really great reading or listening month. Spider says hello. Don't forget, everyone, that I post new videos Mondays and Fridays. All the links to my social media are in the doobly-doo for you are clicking. If you liked what you saw here, there's a lot more on my channel. And if you want it to be higher quality or you just, like, are sick of what's already here, you can become my patron over on Patreon, where you will get exclusive content and your donations will help me pay for better equipment. I'm working on getting a new camera, and then after that I'm going to probably get a new mic, and it's going to be so good. I'm, like, really close to getting, uh, like, I've got, like, three cameras that I'm ogling, and I'm really close to getting one of them. So... We're almost there, and it's great. I will see you again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye! All right, everyone, it's that time again. It's time to thank my illustrious patrons of the month, Lennox, Amanda, Thelia, Jenny, Joseph, Kim, Lisa, Sabby Panda, Sam, and Sarah. Thank you all so much for your support. It means the world to me.